Excuse me. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a walk cycle that is stationary, meaning it stays in place, and then also use that same walk cycle you made to do a dynamic one, which means that it walks across the uh, stage. And I'm going to start off with my character here, and I'm going to make a new walk cycle um, from scratch. So I'll go to frame one, I'll hit Z, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my legs, and I'll do the scissor pose, one leg forward, one leg back, and I'll go ahead and uh, grab this leg and position it a little bit lower so it's in line. Try and get these uh, legs in line. And then I'll put the, since the front leg is going back, we want the front arm to go forward, go opposite, and then the back arm go back that so we're gonna go ahead and hit command a command F to uh, freeze select all of the bones and freeze them into position then we're gonna go to frame 24 so click on the timeline command a command F that creates another keyframe so it's exactly the same as our first one then we're gonna do the opposite position on frame 12 so I'll hit Z and let's go ahead and position the leg back leg goes back Front leg goes forward. Let's grab that. Point the uh, shoe up. This one down. And again, I can go ahead and grab the hip bone and position the legs a little bit better so it looks a little nicer. This is a very simple walk cycle. It's not uh, not the most complex, but it works. It's what I use. And then we'll go ahead and hit Z, move the front arm back and the back arm forward. So we get the opposite position. I'll do a command A, command F to select the bones, freeze them. And then our front leg is going forward in our walk cycle. So on frame six, between the first and the middle keyframe that we keyframes that we've made, we're gonna grab that front leg. I hit Z. Oops. And if I can, grab it, there we go, and bend it, and then point the foot down. I'm gonna make sure that the uh, back leg is straight. So we're, we're bending the front leg a little bit, pointing the foot down. Then we're gonna bend the front arm also just a little bit. It gives it a little bit of um, sway when, it's, when the uh, character's walking. Then Command A, Command F, select all bones freeze frame them then we're gonna go to 18 do the opposite hit Z I'll go ahead and bend the back leg point the toe down and bend the back arm a little bit and command a command F to select the key or all the bones and freeze those as well so now we've got the walk cycle then we're just gonna add a little bit of a bounce so I'm going to go to frame one select the transform layer tool Click on the character, and you'll see if I move this up, it makes a keyframe for the first frame. Then we'll go to six, and we're gonna hold shift down and move the character down just a little bit. And that makes a keyframe for the character to go down. So I'll select those two keyframes that I just made. Command C, copy, go to frame 12, and hit Command V to paste, and then frame 24, and Command V to paste again. And we don't need this last keyframe, so we'll go ahead and select it and delete it. And then this frame was a little bit off, so we're just going to move it over 18. So now we have this up and down motion as well when our character's walking. So we'll go ahead and select all of these keyframes, and then right click and say Linear. This is going to keep the uh, character moving in the, at the same pace with all of the movements. And then we'll go ahead and select the last keyframes. Right click and say cycle. And we want to select relative to playback and then change this to 22. The reason why we're changing this to 22 
is because if we leave it on 23, it's going to repeat. 24, frame 24 and frame one are the same. So it's gonna look like it's stuttering if it does it um, repeatedly. So we want it to go to one frame after, to the frame two. So now I have a walk cycle. And now I want to make this an action. So I can select all of the keyframes. I'll go ahead and do a command X. That's gonna cut it, but also copy it. Then we're gonna go to window, actions. And I have a walk cycle and a bunch of different actions already, but we're gonna make a new one. So we'll click new, we'll call this stationary walk cycle. Hit OK, and the timeline should turn pink, and we'll go to frame zero, and we'll go ahead and do a command V to paste. So we have that action that we can add in any time. So I'll go back into the timeline. So let's say you're uh, animating your character, but you've moved the character into a different position. So like say the character is over here, and then you want to have the character to start walking. So if I select the action, stationary walk cycle, and click add, the problem is we've moved that character, but we've also assigned the character a position uh, in that walk cycle. So it's going to snap back to wherever that original position is, and we don't want that. So to fix this, let's go back to frame zero. We're going to create a group folder, and we're going to call it position slash uh, movement and then we're going to drag and drop our character into that folder and you can see it went over to the uh, right a little bit so it's in that folder and we're going to move the folder instead of the character so if I'm animating and let's say I'll go to frame one I'll resize and put the character over here and then I have the character animating for a while and then say frame 48 I want him to walk I can now go into my character select stationary walk cycle and add that and he doesn't move because we've moved the folder instead which is great so let's go back I'll undo let's say let's go to frame one remember to use the position movement folder put our character where we need it to be. So for instance, let's say we have our character and we want him walking while the background's moving for a scene. So I have um, a brush that has buildings on it. And we'll go ahead, well, let me hide that first for a second. So let's go ahead and add that stationary walk cycle. So we have our character walking and then the buildings zoom out here for a second let's go to frame one and what we would do is we would animate the background so if I have I'd have the buildings here let me make these bigger this is gonna be the buildings are gonna be blurry but this is just for an example so let's select this, have him on the sidewalk. So what I would do for this is I would go along the timeline and then I would just move the background to the left to have my character walking. Let me zoom in so you can see that a little better. So now our character is stationary. background's moving actually it's a little too fast but so that's that's great if you're doing a stationary walk and you have your characters in frame and you want them to do that but say you want that same character to walk across the screen instead and have the background static so let me hide this the buildings real quick so what you can do instead of creating a whole nother action for the walk cycle we're gonna use an additive cycle on the folder so we're gonna move the character over 
and let's go ahead and change the position. Let's go to frame one, move the character over, and resize him using the folder, remember, not the character. And say we want him to walk across the screen. So we have that cycle going already. But let's go back in so you can see. So we have our character walking, stationary. And to create the movement to go across, we're going to go to frame one. We'll select the position folder instead. And now we're going to use the onion skinning so we can get the, the walk cycle to um, move right so we don't have this character sliding over. So turning the onion skin on, we're going to go to frame 12. And then we're going to click under the timeline with onion skins on. And see how it makes that little gray box right there? That's going to show us what our first frame looks like. And we're going to zoom in. What we're going to do is I'm going to hold shift down. And I'm going to left click and drag the character over. And I want to make sure that the heel of my character is lining up with the onion skin picture of the first frame. So right here we have the heel and the heel of the back right there. This way we get the spacing uh, of the uh, walk or the gait of the character to look right. So right about there. And then we'll go to frame 24. And let's make sure we got, we're going to use the onion skin again. So we'll select frame 12. I'll deselect frame 13 because it was over just one. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hold shift down and drag our character so the front heel is lined up with the uh, front heel of the onion skin picture. So right there. This way we get the proper um, amount of space when the character's walking, like I said. And let's go ahead and select those and right click and make them linear so it's consistent. And then we'll go ahead and select that last keyframe and we'll do cycle. And this time we're going to click additive cycle. And we're going to do relative to cycle playback and go to frame 22. So it goes right back to the second keyframe. Or I mean, not the second keyframe, the second, uh, <laughs> the frame just bef just after the first one. So it doesn't repeat. And then let's turn off onion skinning. And let's go ahead and close this. So now you can see right now. Even though we're using that stationary walk cycle, we're moving the folder itself. So now the character is walking across the screen, which I think is pretty cool. It makes it a lot easier to um, uh, animate both, both ways, stationary and dynamic. So uh, that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, uh, just leave them down below. Um, I'm, I really want to make more videos for you guys. I know I say that every video, but I'm going to try and do better this year. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.